So this video will go through topic 2.4, which deals with energy flow. So a list of understandings that we will cover. Uh, the application will be uh, covered through the Google form associated with this lesson. So we'll start at where energy enters into our ecosystems. So autotrophs harvest the energy from the sun by carrying out uh, photosynthesis. That photosynthesis will convert light energy into chemical energy um, in the form of ATP, which is then used to make uh, carbohydrates, which then get used to make cell walls or stored as starch um, or um, turned into glucose. Um, heterotrophs indirectly rely on the sun as their source of energy in the fact that they consume the chemical energy that was created from the, the light. Ultimately, all energy enters in, um, in, into an ecosystem through autotrophs. All living things do require uh, carbon compounds harvested by autotrophs by photosynthesis. So all that glucose that you'd find in an ecosystem, um, all those carbon compounds, um, are all, all originate through those autotrophs through photosynthesis. Because photosynthesis is crucial um, for, those, for these ecosystems, the amount of photosynthesis that occurs um, within a given ecosystem um, can vary um, um, based on the fact that the amount of sunlight um, reaching the Earth varies based on the location. Not all parts of the Earth receive equal amounts of sunlight. And cell respiration in autotrophs and heterotrophs um, use the energy from carbon compounds for, cells, for cell activities. Um, much of that energy gets lost as, as heat. So um, it's an inefficient use of that energy that travels through an ecosystem. We'll see that as we go along. So that energy can be traced through, um, that energy that moves through an ecosystem can be traced through food chains. So with the food chain, it's a sequence of organisms which feed on the previous uh, one. The process of passing energy from one organism to another through feeding is referred to as the flow of energy. Within any food chain, there are at least two to five organisms found. Within the food chain, producers always come first, so they always make up that first part, or that first level of the food chain, followed by primary consumers, secondary consumer, tertiary consumers, and then quaternary uh, consumers. It's important to note that the arrow in the food chain show the direction of energy flow, and not who is eating who or what is eating what. So, for example, in the image provided, um, the sun um, provides energy um, to the corn plant to generate uh, that corn. Um, ultimately, that energy gets transferred to the flow to the locust when that locust consumes that corn plant. Energy from the locust gets transferred to the lizard when the lizard consumes or when the lizard consumes the locust. And the energy from the lizard gets transferred to the snake when the snake uh, consumes the uh, lizard. As a result, uh, consumers, um, which are organisms that ingest organic matter, which is living or recently deceased, uh, can be classified based on their position within a food chain. So within our food chain, um, we always have producers on uh, the bottom or they make up that first level of our food chain. Um, the consumers then that eat producers are referred to as primary consumers. Um, or um, when energy flows from producers uh, to those that uh, consume those producers, we refer to that as a primary consumer. Um, when primary consumers um, are, are consumed, that energy flows then to secondary consumers and so forth and so forth. Um, with energy consumption now, um, living organisms need energy to uh, power cell processes, so that's what that energy goes towards. And it goes towards things such as synthesizing molecules, such as DNA, RNA, or proteins, 
It is involved with things like active uh, transport, uh, muscle contraction, cell import, and exports, exocytosis, endocytosis. Um, these can all be energy dependent uh, processes. And it is uh, ATP that will ultimately supply the cell with this energy. So just recall that uh, ATP is made from the breakdown of sugars in the process of glycolysis and the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, um, all involved in cell respiration, which was covered uh, in unit two. So ATP can be used directly by the cell um, for different activities, while glucose uh, cannot. So glucose is what holds the energy, uh, ATP is what supplies the energy. As energy flows between these different levels, uh, a lot of energy is actually lost between uh, these different uh, trophic levels due to cellular processes. So um, as um, these organisms are performing these metabolic processes, um, a lot of energy is actually lost in the form of heat. A very small portion actually uh, of that energy uh, consumed actually goes uh, to the biomass of that particular uh, trophic level or that particular level within a food chain. So as a result, less energy is actually available to the organisms in the next trophic level. It is widely accepted that only 10% of the energy from the previous level is passed on to the next. After only a few stages in a few chain, the amount of energy left is very small. For this reason, uh, trophic levels in food chains are restricted, so you'll never uh, get beyond a quaternary uh, consumer. There just isn't the energy available within that ecosystem to support anything higher. <clears throat> This energy flow can be, um, can be illustrated through what is called uh, a pyramid of energy. This is the amount of energy converted to new biomass by each trophic level. Uh, a horizontal bar is used uh, to represent each level. And often the units are kilojoules per meter squared per year. So by the following set of units. Since time is part of the unit, Energy pyramids take into account the rate of energy production, not just uh, the quantity. So within our uh, pyramid of energy, um, remember that it shows the planet flow of energy between trophic levels. So we just have our producers at the bottom. Um, and note just that this initial trophic level um, is relatively large because this will contain the largest amount of energy. As these producers get uh, consumed by primary consumers, only a small portion of energy is transferred to that next trophic level. So in this example here, um, the amount of energy transferred is only 10% of, that, of, that, of, of, of the energy that is found within the producer level. And um, when those primary consumers get consumed by secondary consumers, only 10% of that energy is transferred. Um, and then only 10% of that energy is transferred to the next trophic level. So as a result, the amount of energy greatly diminishes as you move up these trophic levels. So around 90% um, of that energy is lost between each trophic level. Now, ultimately, all these food chains can be linked together to show a food web. So those food chains um, within an ecosystem will be interconnected. Um, that demonstrates um, how um, energy can flow um, through those food chains. And the trophic levels within that food uh, web show the position of an organism um, within that uh, food chain. So food webs can also show the multiple energy sources for an organism as well. So in the following diagram that is provided, in that first trophic level, or within our uh, producers, um, we have things like uh, algae um, that are uh, providing, um, that are performing photosynthesis and creating those organic compounds. Um, energy can be transferred then um, to the mayfly uh, larvae, which would be considered um, that primary consumer.
energy can then be transferred into those uh, secondary consumers, um, which can then be transferred um, to that uh, tertiary consumer. And then um, just note that you know we don't have beyond uh, a, a, a fourth trophic level, as there really isn't energy that is potentially available to support uh, higher trophic levels. And you know, we in the diagram here, um, only one food chain has been outlined, but other food chains in this diagram can also be identified. So the mayfly, mayfly larvae may also uh, provide energy to the juvenile trout. And the juvenile trout provides energy to that uh, kingfisher. So within that food web, you know, we have a combination of uh, food chains um, that are present. So that completes this video. The next step is to complete the Google form, which can be found on the Google slideshow, um, found on the link associated uh, with this uh, uh, video.